Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Saturday the 15th of January. Now, unusually, I want to start off with a question um, from Western Australia today about what's going to happen when I'm exposed to Omicron. And this applies to everyone, because if you haven't been exposed to Omicron already, you will be in the next few weeks. Everyone's going to be exposed in the next days, weeks or, or month or two. This is going to be essentially universal, so we have to be ready for it. Now, let me just show you uh, Gary's question, because it really got me uh, thinking a bit. Uh, Gary's in Western Australia. Now, Western Australia, the borders have basically been closed off. Um, so the, there's very low levels of Omicron in uh, Western Australia. And Australia was so good at curtailing the other waves that Western Australia hardly got anything. Now, there was cases in, 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 in Victoria and New South Wales, and there was a long lockdown there. But Western Australia has been largely protected. So that means pretty well all of the immunity in Western Australia comes from vaccination, not from natural exposure. So they don't have the natural exposure uh, benefit to, to, to the immunity. So, so Gary is saying, yeah, in Western Australia, we've had virtually no COVID due to the excellent border controls, etc. Well, absolutely true. Now, you say sadly we're about to open up, but you can't remain closed forever. But I take your point. So presumably Omicron will soon be rampant. Well, yes. Um, as soon as there is free travel in and out of Western Australia, everyone in Western Australia is going to be exposed to um, Omicron pretty soon, certainly in, in, in big centres like Perth, where, where it can travel around the city. In the remote areas, of course, it's going to take quite a lot longer. So if you're up in the Western Cape or Shark Bay or somewhere like that, you, you'll, you'll, it'll probably take longer to get to you. Uh, but, but everyone's going to be exposed to as any interaction with anyone else. So basically, you are all going to be exposed. Uh, and um, the immunity, as we say, is only from vaccines. Now, Gary is 65 years old, which does increase your risk somewhat, Gary. And you have comorbidities, which also increases your risk. So Gary here is clearly at some increased risk. How should I approach this looming threat? I, I wouldn't say threat, Gary. I would say uh, guarantee. Um, should I stay at home for months, live as normally as possible, mass social distancing, etc.? So all of these things, the staying at home, the social isolating, the mask wearing, um, yes, all, all good, but all they're going to do is delay that which is completely uh, inevitable, Gary. You, you, you are going to be exposed. There's no way around that. So what, what should we be thinking about? Well, I think the first thing to say is, Gary, at your age and with you, your comorbidities, I don't, you don't mention what your comorbidities are, but vaccination for you, Gary, is absolutely essential. And certainly for anyone in the older age group. And of course, we should be following our national guidelines on vaccination anyway. But I know that's controversial. But for someone of, uh, of Gary's age um, with comorbidities, absolutely. And we know that people, Gary, who've had a booster dose of the vaccine are going to get even greater protection against hospitalisation. So if you have a booster dose of the vaccine, you're going to reduce your chances of hospitalisation by about 90%. So well worth doing in your situation, Gary. Now, um, Western Australia is a very sunny place. But strange, strangely enough, even though it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nice and warm and sunny, people often keep out of the sun because they've had so much anti-melanoma stuff now now that's right of course but i think gary what you need to do is optimize your levels of vitamin d now this could be getting a bit of sun as long as you don't get sunburned they, they reckon that if you get your shorts off in the gar if you know sorry sorry mistake if you leave your shorts on <laughs> but take everything else off so, so so you're decent um then um you know like half an hour aside if it takes you about an hour to get sunburned you know in in sort of early evening in western australia perhaps if it takes you about an hour to get sunburnt then half an hour aside you should make about twenty thousand units of vitamin d if you don't want to do that then do uh, consider vitamin d supplementation as indeed i am doing here because i live in the north of england at the moment also think about your levels of zinc and your levels of magnesium zinc in the short term is going to I think the evidence is there. It is going to improve your protection against viral infection. Now, you don't want to be taking zinc all your life because it can lower your levels of copper. But given that you are going to be exposed to this increased risk pretty soon, well worth uh, considering. And of course, it goes without saying you should go and talk to your doctor about all of these things. That's what they're there for, to help prevent illness. 
Next thing I would say, Gary, is eat a very wide variety of different plants. Now, you're always hearing that one particular plant is good for one particular thing. So, you know, blueberries are supposed to be good for you and kale. Well, they are good for you. Kale, uh, green vegetables, onions, lots of different things have, have uh, protective properties. Uh, but basically, it goes back to the old adage, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So have a wide variety of fresh fruit and vegetables. Of course, with the fruit, you've got to be a bit careful about the sugar. Certainly don't want fruit juices. If you're having fruit, uh, which is good, have whole fruit. So then you get the fibre and you get the fruit at the same time. That makes it more of a complex carbohydrate. And that means that the glycemic index is lower. So instead of your sugar going up quickly, your sugar will go up more slowly and be sustained for a period of time, which is what you want. So I think about your diet, a wide variety of uh, fruits and vegetables. And also remarkably important in immunity, and this is often missed, but it's a really important point, um, sleep. Get plenty of sleep. Sleep is vital for immunity, as is good levels of activity within your normal uh, activity ability. But getting good levels of sleep is so important. Now, that could be something as simple as um, turning off all your blue lights, changing your phone to an orange light, when it's evening time, putting the lights down in the house, not exposing yourself to screens, uh, you know, like, like, like watching videos or something. <laughs> do, don't, don't do that late, late at night. Uh, and um, go, going to bed an hour early. Um, just think about, about your sleep. Uh, not not having uh, big meals just before you go to bed. Uh, I find uh, I, I, get, I get regurgitation if I eat a lot before I go to bed. So I, I don't always do it, but I, I try to I try not to eat after tea time. Sometimes I get a bit hungry. And, anyway, that's my problem. Um, but, you know, try, 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 try and do that. Alcohol, of course, um, alcohol makes sleep worse uh, because we get this rebound effect. Cut down caffeine late in the evening. All of these things that, you know, can promote sleep, you know, and, and, and by the by the time you get to our kind of age, Gary, you, you, you know what's good for your sleep and you know what's not good for your sleep. Now, very well worthwhile having one of these um, these these meters in the house, these SATS meters. We've played with these before. So um, ha having one of these in the house is, 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 uh, is usually a good idea. So just get one of those, put it put it on your finger. And you can monitor your condition. And um, so these are about what twenty dollars or something. They're, they're actually where am I? They're actually they're actually pretty cheap. So th think think about one of those. And and then the other one to think about is uh, a simple thermometer. So uh, again again the, these are probably about ten fifteen dollars from the internet. So uh, keep an eye on your temperature. Um, there you go. Um, so have one of these in the house and one of these in the house and then it means if you do need to talk to your doctor it's a simple report and you can give and you can <laughs> you can give them objective facts which is all, always a good thing to do uh, now um, the other thing I would recommend Gary is is early diagnosis so be aware of the uh, possible uh, clinical features of COVID and the most likely ones are these uh, and we've looked at these many times. Running, I'll post them again. Running nose, headache, fatigue, sneezing, sore throat, persistent cough, hoarse voice. I'll, I'll post them all. You can, you can, <coughs> you can, you can read through these. In, in fact, uh, what I would do is print them out. Uh, take it, take it from the, uh, take it from the notes and print them out. So, so for example, we see that 19% of people who are newly diagnosed with Omicron at the moment get uh, loss of smell. But uh, three quarters of them, uh, us as it's going to be, uh, seventy-three percent get a runny nose, headache, fever. So think any of these features. Think is this Omicron? And of course, you want to have some tests in the house, so you can test and then report to your uh, to your healthcare providers, to your doctor, if you become positive, uh, and let people know that you have become positive. So um, early diagnosis, tests in the lateral flow tests in the house. Uh, now, if you get early diagnosis, and because you're in a high risk category, Gary, it may well be that your doctors or the local healthcare facilities want to treat you at an early stage. And for the treatments that we give early, the earlier, the better. So if you can recognise that you have, when you get Omicron, and notice I'm saying when you get Omicron, Gary, because I think you are going to, um, Think about those, report in straight away, 
Test as soon as you can. As soon as you get symptoms, a test is likely to be positive. Take the test from your throat as well as your nose because Omicron often you get higher readings in, in your throat and you can diagnose that straight away. And that means your healthcare providers can immediately give you treatments that will make it less likely that you're hospitalised. So, for example, they could take you in as a, as a couple hours and, and give you monoclonal antibody infusion. That's one possibility. There's evidence that uh, Paxlovid, that's the Pfizer antiviral, reduces hospitalisation. There's evidence that uh, fluvoxamine, the antidepressant, reduces hospitalisation in people that are just diagnosed. So why not talk to your GP now and say, look, can I have some fluvoxamine? It's a common selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor antidepressant. All doctors know about it. Say, could I have some to keep in the house? And then as soon as you became, as soon as you tested positive after early recognising the symptoms, you could start taking it. And there's evidence that fluvoxamine will reduce your chances of hospitalisation by 30%. Pax Lovid, um, you might not be able to get that to keep in the house, but if you could get it early and you arrange, arrange some pharmaceutical delivery policy, so that's another thing to prepare people around you. Uh, Pax Lovid is also very good at reducing hospitalisations. Um, if you actually get the acute viral infection, it's probably worth thinking about increasing your zinc, maybe to 50 milligrams for a few days. Uh, and also um, think about your magnesium levels as well. Um, unfortunately, in Australia, doctors aren't allowed to prescribe ivermectin, but you could ask your GP and ask about that and have a discussion about that. Now, you mentioned, Gary, that you have comorbidities. Now, all your comorbidities want to be optimised before before you become infected. So have you got high blood pressure? Well, take medicines to reduce your blood pressure and get it as normal as possible. Have you got some heart failure? Well, make sure you're up to date with your angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors to make sure that's as optimized as possible. Uh, have you got chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Well, make sure that's optimised and you have your inhalers in the house. Have you got diabetes mellitus? Well, make sure your blood sugar levels are as optimised as possible. Have you got chronic kidney disease? Well, make, make, make sure you're treating that, optimising the treatment of that as much as you can, taking the medication and avoiding perhaps foods that are high in potassium that might exacerbate that. What is your weight, um, Gary? Um, I'm not asking, I'm picking on Gary. Harry. I could say, what's your weight, John? It's a bit more than it should be. So um, this is a really good time, given that we're all going to be exposed to Omicron. And given that we know that obesity is increasing the risks of getting more severe disease. And we know this, this is known. Um, let's lose a bit of weight. Let's get ready for this. This is coming. This is an assault that's going to come. I need to optimise how ready I am uh, for it. So any bad habits to cut out, Gary? Take it you don't smoke, alcohol's under control. You know, think, think about your lifestyle factors that we could optimise at this stage before before it's coming. And of course, if you're in, if they're in, if you're watching this video in the UK or the United States, uh, you haven't had Omicron already. You could have been exposed yesterday, today or tomorrow. So the, these things apply to everyone. Um, have, have, have some way of uh, communicating have uh, contacts so there's people you know so when you test positive you can tell your healthcare provider you can tell some relatives you can tell some friends so that people know and do have a supply of your usual medications and food in the house so that's a few things I taught I, I thought of um, if you follow the UK government guidelines uh, you'd, you'd be waiting to get um, a fever uh, shortness of breath and uh, loss of sense of smell to know you had it which is just laughable so that's why we keep going over and over the, 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 these are the covid symptom tracker features uh, from a zoe tim specter study uh, that they're the most common ones so any of those should arouse your suspicion lead you to get tested and with all these preventative measures, the earlier you get them, the better. If you get them on the first day that you're diagnosed, the first day that you become symptomatic, you can greatly reduce your chances of hospitalisation compared to taking them on the second day. Now, it's still good to take them on the second day, but the chances of reducing hospitalisation are even better on the first day. It's good to take them on the second day, but if you take them on the third day, your chances of being hospitalised are that much greater, or if you take them on the fourth day. So... Taking them as soon after diagnosis with this high index of suspicion is good. Have one of these in to monitor your oxygen levels just in case that does become a problem. Uh, take your temperature, although we know fever is only 29%, uh, only 29% of people get fever. 
very often the runny nose headache and sore throat and sneezing come first so be aware of that and um, uh, think ask about these early preventative treatments and of course your, your doctors in Australia will probably have some other clever things they can do as well as soon as people are diagnosed to keep them out of hospital and then of course if you do deteriorate then ob obviously you would need hospital care but if you do those things you are massively reducing your chances of being hospitalized so it's not like the first round where they said go home and give us a call if you turn blue we've improved hopefully since then and I'm sure that is the situation in, in WA as well. Now, I was, um, was going to go on. I've got some more things to go on and do. Um, uh, yeah, but, but I, th I think I'll actually just post that as it is because that's probably quite useful information and I don't want it to be too long because what, what I actually find on these videos is a lot more people watch the first 10 minutes than anything else. The, the, the number of people drop off. So we'll leave that because that's quite important information. Thank you for your question, Gary, and stay well. And thank you, everyone, for watching.